All right, what is going on, guys? It's Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal TV. So before we get into the actual conflict that just started today, the Middle East is on fire right now. Uh, everyone is talking about the Middle East because essentially the, the, the big Middle East war just started. So we're going to get into the details of that. Uh, but first of all, uh, yesterday, no show. I actually went to Civil War. I was able to go to the, the movie and uh, I wanted to break down if the, whether that was Ganda or whether that was not. Uh, of course, I'm going to read this article, which is kind of crazy. Uh, the actual Civil War was also preceded by fiction that imagined what if America had a civil conflict. I'll tell you my thoughts on that, and then we'll get into the really insane stuff. And again, this is a good way to kind of ease people in. If you don't like scary movies after this, then I would highly recommend tuning out. If you uh, can't handle scary movies, you're an adult. Don't watch a scary movie. Uh, right now, what's happening <clears throat> it, over in the Middle East, it is scary. Uh, it is the conflict that we knew was coming. It is the conflict that we've told you about for five, six years now, and now it is starting. So if you don't like that, you have the choice to be here. This is not mandatory. You're not being forced to watch. So uh, doom and gloom, it, it, this is by choice. So... Just remember that. Now, as far as, as the the year is uh, 1849, Martin Van Buren was just sworn in uh, for his fourth term as president. Every state from the Cal Carolinas uh, on the south succeeds from the Union. The U.S. Army occupies Richmond to keep Virginia from joining them. Separatists take the Western Mountains and organize a guerrilla campaign. In Washington, Van Buren assumes dictatorial powers, hangs traitors on a whim, and the sons of Old Dominion have to choose between the Union they have raised to ad admire the state and they deeply adore an intriguing alternate history not quite the novel in which story appears flashed forward in time not back well actually it did both published in 1836 but with a date on the title page of 1856 as if remembering a war that had already occurred the partisan leader a tale of a future didn't so much relate to a different version of the civil war as prophecy it's coming missing the eventual start date by only a dozen years so there was an actual uh, fictional story wrote way back when, uh, 12 years or uh, 30 or 40 years before uh, the actual Civil War about the Civil War happening. And oddly enough, it was very close. Now, a lot of people have been chattering about the movie Civil War because obviously it shows us image. It just came out yesterday. It shows us images of the United States split into two, an actual civil conflict going and um, most people thought, oh, this is totally going to be Ganda. It's going to be this. I was actually really, really surprised. They did not mention the word Republican or Democrat once in that movie. There was no partisan stuff in there that I could, uh, that was obvious. Now, there was subtle stuff in that movie that was pretty crazy. But after a, a string of movies, our community pays attention to everything, like Leave the World Behind. Obviously, a lot of people covered that. It was a, it was a big controversial uh, film because of what it, it showed. It showed a civil conflict at the end. Uh, as far as uh, Don't Look Up, for some of the other kind of end-of-the-worlders, showed a uh, asteroid hitting Earth and how the government would respond to it. How It Ends showed a very eerie s scenario, which we almost believe was solar-related or something space-related, but also uh, what would happen if uh, a solar event kind of triggered things like the Cascadia Subduction Zone and Yellowstone and things like that. So all of these movies have really, e you know, kind of had this eerie feeling of predicting the future. Future. A lot of them had this very realistic theme, and a lot of them had consultants that actually uh, put a lot into the film to make it as realistic as possible. As far as how it ends was probably the creepiest in, in my mind, uh, along with Leave the World Behind was a little bit more corny. Uh, but again, it, there were some really creepy things about all of them. And a lot of folks found a lot of really weird kind of symbols in the background. Now, Leave the World Behind, that was probably the creepiest because... It was actually produced by the former president, not the last one, but the one before that, uh, by their production company. And a lot of people thought, oh, maybe he just paid for it. No, he actually stepped in and said, N you know, I know a lot about stuff since I was the pres for eight years. This is how it will go down. If it does go down, this is how it would happen. Uh, this is the kind of thing that would do it. He actually, he was a consultant on the film. 
And when you look at the scenario in that movie of us being divided, it's a mirror of what's happening today. We are completely divided. Now, the movie that I just went to, that was, uh, again, something completely different. It follows around the journalist Kurtzen Dunst and this group of journalists, and it shows it from the journalist's point of view. From uh, only a couple points, could you really tell that there was a bias there? And you think it's really hard to tell because they put Texas and California on the same side in that film. If you actually look at the map, it uh, it didn't put like a West, they called them the Western forces, but it didn't put the Western, uh, it wasn't West Coast versus East Coast. It was from California, like Utah, Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, Georgia, Florida. It was like this line down here versus all the rest. So, but Washington and Oregon and a lot of these, uh, these very, very right now uh, liberal places, they were on the other side. So you would assume that the president of this movie was like, um, I don't know, you know, it was a liberal president or something. And he was a third term president. They say that in the movie, which tells you that they changed something or they did some sort of tyrannical move to keep them in for a third term. But then at the same time, they show somebody who you believe is the opposite of the Western forces dumping people into a big, like, man-made hole. And it shows you uh, people that none of them are from the country. Uh, basically saying it, it, it hints that this argument is over people coming into our country. When you see in the, the film, you know, what kind of American are you? That's literally saying, are you American? If you're not American something else happens to you. So there's some pretty eerie things here and they, they mirror right now what is going on and what is happening in our country. Now, after this movie premiered, I was really surprised by a few things. The uh, theater was completely empty, probably because they're going tonight or something, or people are freaked out about all of the FBI threats or whatever else. But it was uh, myself, my wife, and then two other people in a huge deluxe theater. It was pretty nuts. There was no staff. Uh, you do everything digital now. Basically, everybody has lost their job at that theater because uh, you just go in there and there's barcodes and you scan things and you walk in. It was pretty crazy to, to, to see in itself. But as far as the movie, there's a lot of uh, really creepy scenes in that. And I would say if you're going to go watch it, uh, go watch it for the actual images because it's really insane how much money they spent on it considering it was an indie company, $50 million dollars. And they made it look like American uh, uh, American cities were actually in a civil conflict. Is this a prediction of the future? Again, I hope not. But look at what is going on. Also, you think in the movie, if this was truly happening, and if it does happen in our future, if our power goes out, what? how are people going to act? Look at how the young and old are divided. Uh, this color versus that color. This party versus that party. This religion versus that religion. Everyone is now split and divided directly down the middle on subjects that they will never see eye to eye on. It's a very, very creepy thing to think about. But again, us as preppers, we do think about it. And we try to prep for it. In the movie, one thing I pointed at, uh, I, I thought that was really eerie is if this was really going on, where are adversaries during all of this? It didn't show a single adversary, nothing about anybody uh, other than that. If this truly did happen in our country, I guarantee you one of our adversaries would take advantage of that. If our military is so uh, in-depth with fighting each other, who the heck is protecting us? Uh, and it's it's crazy because it could be a real scenario in the near future. So we'll talk about that. And of course, after this, we're going to go straight into what just happened in the Middle East. Uh, they expect that uh, they are overwhelming the Iron Dome system right now. And it's getting pretty freaky. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in this show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is again, one of the easiest 
download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Uh, so we're going to go over a lot of stuff, but again, I'm, I am I, I wasn't going to spoil the whole movie for you, but I will say for those that you do want to go see the movie, I saw a bunch of comments saying um, somebody will, I, I think maybe I misspoke, but uh, the former Prez is not involved with this newest film. They were involved in Leave the World Behind, and I think you can see it for free if you're, if you're uh, sneaky enough. Uh, but it's also on uh, Netflix. That's that's who put that out. Um, as far as this new movie, that it's A24. A24 is a studio that also made Ex Machina or Ex Machina, whatever it is. That movie was eerily predictive. And I think that Ex Machina or Machina, whatever it's called, that is also going to come true unless everything falls apart. Uh, that showed AI in a robot, in a, a woman robot in that movie. And it had a very eerie plot because of how real it is. Uh, they were doing a test on whether a human being could see if this robot, if they could tell that they were a robot uh, and that the AI do some sort of, I forget the te the name of the test, but yeah, it's pretty crazy. Uh, the same studio did this one and yeah, it's their biggest film to date and I could see why they spent a lot of money making scenes that looked absolutely as real as you can get of America in a civil conflict and it was very current. Somehow they hid almost every reference to which side was which. They put Texas alongside California, so it's very confusing. You're like, is the Western forces uh, on this side of the aisle or that side of the aisle? I think that they wanted it not to be, uh, you know, stuck up on on the left versus right thing, but they snuck in a lot of things in there that kind of said. Uh, that it was the Western forces were the left and the the government was the right. And it, I think it was even uh, low-key trying to tell people, like, this is what happens if what's-his-name gets back in the office. That's what I think was hidden in there, but I don't know. Uh, that this is happening in the future, and but at the end, basically, we win anyways. It was it was very creepy. Now, straight up to the, the new conflict, let's bring my co-host, slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine. Okay, so we have a lot of craziness going on, and um, the U.S. moves more forces into the Middle East to prepare for what they are saying and what JB says imminent uh, strike on Israel. Pentagon sends aircraft carrier that can intercept missiles to the Red Sea in a warning to Tehran. Uh, Dex, do you want to go over this one? This is... Yeah, so we have now, uh, we actually think we even have somewhere else, uh, there's another missile ship that's already there. Um, but now we're moving a carrier group. They're taking the USS Dwight Eisenhower and they're sending it to the Red Sea. Now, remind you guys uh, from a geographical standpoint, that's below the Suez Canal, um, right below the Mediterranean. But anywhere in that area should be reachable uh, for them to get in and out of uh, the, the hot zone, so to speak around Israel or even all over to Iran if they needed to. But I'm, I'm guessing this may even move closer if it needs to, but they're moving into the Red Sea immediately. Um, I don't know how long that takes. I don't know what, where it was currently stationed, but uh, that, uh, that is underway. So that is one of the big things uh, and doing that will bring in reinforcements to help support them. This is very much like what we did when uh, Israel went in and started attacking the Strip. We went in with our carrier groups. We put one in the Mediterranean, and I think we even had one in the Red Sea for a little bit, uh, and then moved it moved it over towards the Persian Gulf for a while um, to to back up and that from that side, or maybe the other way around. But nonetheless, this is very much akin to that. We're not moving carrier groups for nothing. This is this is something, uh, and we'll talk more about how all the things that are coming together right now that make it look like today and this weekend are pretty hot as it relates to uh, the kickoff in the Middle East. And this is no surprise. All of our community, we've known that this was happening. We've told friends and family members about this. 
Uh, it really, it comes down to like, how fast is this going to affect us here? And that's the big question is, are, are, are they going to go to battle with each other? And is this going to be completely kept over there? I don't think so. And many of my friends and family don't either. Uh, this is something that we knew was coming. This is the fourth turning. This is this is this happens every uh, so many decades. And a lot of folks think that we've actually gone a really long time without a world conflict. Nothing. It, our, our science and our technology has evolved immensely, but our human nature has not. Uh, that is something that stays the exact same. And it's unfortunate. And now we're also bringing in AI and all of these other things that it's not going to it's not going to be better for us. I, I, I tell you what, having AI be able to judge us won't be great either, uh, because what they'll see is that we are very imperfect. Uh, first off, before the show even started, thank you, everybody that has come to support again. Uh, thank you. Uh, Nevitz, it, it, been a minute. Uh, it's going to be a rough ride, folks. So happy to have you dudes to keep us up to date and informed. Keep her up the great work, uh, Adam and Dex. And Nevitz, thank you. And thank you from Canada. I appreciate that. And thank you for supporting Independent. We appreciate you. And again, thank you guys for uh, being awesome. And thank you for being generous. Be in the light uh, from Canada as well. Thank you for the super chat. Nana MT, nice to see you again. Longtime Fugle fam. Thank you for your support as well. And then Be Real Beast, as always, praying. Uh, be Real, thank you. Probably, I think there's at least three of you guys going on five years or something or longer. So thank you for sticking around and thank you for being here forever. Uh, thank you guys for stopping in. Even if you haven't been here for a minute, a lot of people, they end up stopping by at least once a month. And I really appreciate that. Um, and then um, as far as Hezbollah fires dozens of missiles. So this is, we just did a video covering a, a little bit of this over on Marfugal News, if you want to share out something, uh, that short video would is an eight-minute video that kind of explains what broke down today. Uh, but Hezbollah fires dozens of missiles at Israel, and what they are saying is that this is to overwhelm the Iron Dome. They're sending these crappy little missiles, big missiles, drones, all sorts of stuff, and each time the Iron Dome is used, they're, they're shooting up $50,000 a pop to take these missiles down. Now, the Iron Dome is extremely efficient. Uh, if a missile comes up, it can intercept and take it down. But every time it takes something down, that's $50,000 or more uh, every single time they fire. So, it, and unless it's some of the, I think they have the regular, uh, some of the weapons, and then I think they added in something laser. I, th I think we covered a laser being put in of some sort that can do small stuff, but... Most of most of the time, they are spending a huge chunk of change. They're they're spending a a brand new Tesla every time they shoot something out of the sky. So if they send bombardments of 50, 100, 150 missiles, that adds up really really quick. Uh, do the math on the calculator. That's a lot of money in just a few minutes. Uh, and then, of course, we showed you there's a, a video. This is from Erin Girl. It says, the second Hezbollah volley of missiles on its way, depleting the Iron Dome. It says, just as I predicted uh, hours ago, the Iron Dome is being overwhelmed in preparation for the big retaliation. So they are stating, and a lot, what a lot of people believe is happening here, is that they are trying to deplete all of the Iron Dome's uh, defenses, just overwhelm them completely, and while they're hitting all this stuff out of the sky, they're going to hit them with a really big and nasty strike. Uh, so if that is true, it's not going to be a fun time. Uh, now, we wanted to make sure, obviously, anything on Twitter could be, you know, something aged or old. So we did go through the process to verify uh, all of, of that. And we actually did find uh, backup articles to uh, confirm that that is actually happening, that dozens have been volleyed towards the Iron Dome system and that it is currently happening right now. Uh, and uh, again, they are actually firing a ton, a barrage of 40 uh, rockets at southern Lebanon, at Liz Israel, as the country braced for a major attack by Iran. Some have su suggested the attack, which did not cause any injuries, was an attempt to deplete Israel's supply of surface-to-air missiles before Tehran la la uh, launches a larger strike in retaliation for last week's airstrike on its consulate in Damascus. 
which I we covered it right when that happened. Every, every one of you knew that that was a big event. Uh, hitting hit, hitting their uh, their embassy, their consulate in their embassy building, that was huge. Uh, exactly how it's going down is is what we all thought was going to happen, and this is very unfortunate because it's not going the opposite way. It's not uh, going to peacetime. Uh, now. Uh, let's see here. And then we're going to talk about how they're readying 100 cruise missiles. Before we do, just want to get into it. Make sure to go over and check out EMP Shield. This is a way you can protect yourself. Uh, one of the most probable scenarios as far as we're not going to get a nuke right off the bat. It's not going to be the show fallout. Uh, all the cities aren't going to perish, especially if any of our adversaries want to take us in one piece. What would be one of the most probable is an EMP strike. It would take down our grid uh, and it would leave everything in one piece. Uh, no one would actually perish uh, right off the bat, uh, but it would knock down all of our infrastructure. Every one of our adversaries has a way to do this. This is why most people are preparing, including the government and the military, on protecting themselves against an EMP strike. An electromagnetic pulse could literally fry all of our grid in the United States. Not to mention, if you're an ally of ours, you might be uh, in the same boat. If you want to protect yourself, this device will ground the signal in less than 500 trillionths of a second before it's able to fry your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, generators, solar generators, in the case of the Flex 1500, and even your home. It will protect everything within 250 linear feet of where it is wired into your home. So go, go over to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Make sure to use the code MARF. It helps support us. We are completely on our own. We don't have a multi-channel network, and we don't have a multi-billion dollar company behind us. We have you guys. We're up against an upward hill. So if you can't support in any other way, make sure to share our stuff out. That is the best way to support us uh, it possible. Is share our stuff with somebody who hasn't seen us and bring in a new person. That would be great. All right, and then uh, Dex, let's go over readying 100 cruise missiles for a possible strike against Israel. Yeah, so exactly. There, There's an actual lot of things happening right now all going down at the same time, which is very clear. So uh, as far as readying a large number of missiles for the strike, that comes from three different U.S. officials. Uh, two of the officials said that they had readied more than 100 cruise missiles for the strike. Um, and they have also readied a sizable number of drones that can be used on an attack uh, against Israel. So that's coming from U.S. officials. At the same time now, we also have multiple European airlines have canceled all flights to and from Iran. Um, the skies are clear based on uh, the information that's being able to see over Israel as far as civilian air information. There's nothing flying right now. Um, and there's a lot of other you know, speculation, everybody's speculating that this is about to go down or it started, especially with the early volleys that we started to see with the cheap, sort of the cheap stuff. Let's throw the cheap stuff over and get them, get them drained quickly so that we can then send in the expensive stuff. Um, and, and that's, that's the theory at least. Um, the uh, Pentagon obviously has moved assets. We've already talked about that. Um, there's even uh, a, a, a missile ship that is now parked off the shore uh, near there. Um, we, we've, that's been reported as well. So in addition to the carrier group that's moving in, uh, there's that other ship that's there. The hospitals have all been put on high alert, uh, by home command. So they're awaiting imminent, uh, attacks. They've asked all hospitals to be on high alert. Um, so that's all happening. So lots of these initial things that you see right as these, you know, wartime events kick off this is step by step everything we've seen in the past um and it makes total sense uh, that this is is starting right now and i imagine it's the weekend we're going to see this go into the weekend we just got out of the end of that holiday season uh that religious holiday season and it is probably the time that this is going to go down ramadan so, ended it, yeah it, it did it, and just like it was like the timing of this is exactly what we thought uh, so we talked about how major leaders in, in the Muslim culture, uh, they detest any kind of violence during the month long Ramadan. Uh, it goes from March 10th to April 9th within a couple days of it ending within one day of it ending about 40 in the 48 hours after it ends, all of a sudden you have all of this cracking off. Uh, this is what we thought. And where does it go next? 
somebody, I believe they must watch the show because they just followed me on Twitter. Uh, a big account uh, just said, uh, I think they might have got it from us, but basically it's it's recognizing the pattern. Instead of a theorist, they said that we're a uh, pattern recognitionist or something like that. But it is what it is. We don't have a crystal ball. We're looking at the patterns. And if you look at MSM, a lot of people say, oh, it's MSM. It's all fake. That's in the last five, six, seven years. Everybody just says it's straight up fake when really there's a hidden pattern. They, they, they shape how you view these things. They shape how you view a story. They can shape how you think that the, the, what the motivation is for an actual event. So the event will be real. But the motivation behind it, they'll completely morph that into something that works to their advantage. But the actual event is happening. So a lot of the hints to what is going to happen are very predictive in a lot of MSM for years. And we don't get this as much lately because our track record has been really good about, you know, foreseeing what's going on. And that's with the help of all of you in the community. But people used to say, oh, they cover MSM. If, if by the way you only cover independent like backwoods in the corner of the internet uh, articles uh, again they're basically covering MSM and giving their view on what it is that's what's funny about it uh, but MSM is where it is all hidden there's patterns that are basically right in our face we're seeing that this is all about to go down we've known that this was going to go down the timing is always the hard thing to predict but now it is popping off and what comes next? That is the scary part. Uh, U.S. is going to get involved in this. I can guarantee it. Uh, most of you probably already know that. And I'm sure that some of you don't want to admit it or really don't want to even think about it because we know where this would go. If the U.S. gets involved and heavily involved, not like, oh, we're going to send some stuff to UKR, like gets involved, we are in trouble. Dex, go ahead. Well, and not only... Not only that, but, you know, uh, Iran did come out and say, told the U.S., stay out of it. And if you get involved, you're going to face, you know, attacks on your troops. I actually think it's more than that. Um, we know that if this if this pops off in a greater level with the U.S., not just what's going to happen right now between uh, Israel and Iran, if the U.S. starts engaging directly, kinetically, not just financially, um, we are susceptible here on the homeland, and the the way this type of conflict will be fought won't be the traditional way. You'll have the traditional conflict, the kinetic traditional conflict on the ground, in the air, in the sea, but you're going to have the the other parts, the nastier parts of this, where things are popping off in our in our country, low, things are low. popping off in Europe and UK, and the, <laughs> we've let the the door's been wide open for for this to be, you know prearranged for a long time localized events we're not talking about somewhere else in some far-off country in a desert we're talking about in chicago new york utah uh california san francisco you know florida lots of places that you know right as far as the uh the last few years millions and millions have come in and they have put out official stats of just the ones they caught one out of every hundred that came across from that country, the one that we're talking about right now, uh, were sleeper cells. So those are just the ones that they know about. There are huge groups here, and I've heard some people say, oh, that's just a bunch of hooey. No, they're not. There are groups that absolutely hate the U.S., and that's real. Uh, that is as real as it gets. Heck, in Michigan the other day, you had folks talking about what was going on over there, chanting blank to America. In Dearborn, Michigan, that's that's what was just going down. And they're doing it publicly out in a public square with hundreds of people chanting that. You think that this isn't going to come home? If something, go even if, if it's not an uh, organized group, like the, I, I can almost see it. Lone wolf type of things going on uh, in different places. And yes, it will scare the crap out of people. I, I could see in the near future something happening at several different places and then people being afraid to do stuff one thing you have to remember you can't be afraid to live life but you can also prepare and you can also learn how to deal with scenarios that might happen uh, we've done actual previous shows on what you should do for um, active bang bang kind of uh, training and things like that to the to the chunk of people that think every one of those is a bunch of actors and stuff 
I guarantee that the, those are probably uh, guarantee there are events like that, but there are also real events with real crazies. And if you are stuck in one of those events or you are unfortunately in those, there's videos on how simple things like knowing your exits, knowing what you can use for cover. Uh, every time you walk into a room, scan, make sure you know the emergency exits. Uh, make sure you know where something metal is that you can hide behind. Th simple things like that could literally save your life in an event. Uh, know where your family is at all times. If you're in a group of people at a, a parade or something, know where your people are at. Don't just trust that you'll be able to call them on a cell phone because if something goes off, uh, Boston, for example, after that whatever the thing blew up, uh, all the cell phones were down. People couldn't call their family members. Most people didn't lose their family members, but they freaked out because they couldn't actually call them. So things like that. And that was a, a smaller event compared to what could happen across the nation. You've got Sheriff Rick Jones telling that they just went to the White House and they're being told that there's going to be localized events all over the country. And that was before all of this went down. They're saying that things are going to happen uh, by a certain month this year where everybody selects a certain person. And they they say that it's not just going to be, you know, one thing on the main, you know, drop something in the box. It's going to be in counties across the country, or at least that's what they're preparing for. And that's what they're being told to watch out for. So you can believe that, oh, absolutely, it's not going to happen. And that's fine. But most of us are going, even if it's a 1% chance that's going to happen, we're going to prepare now. We're going to make sure to have a basic plan, make sure to, to let friends and family know about it in the best way possible so you don't look like a crazy nut. It, it's a responsible thing to prep. So just remember that. It, that's why the government and the military does it. Nobody calls them crazy. They call them responsible and, that, and, uh, and smart. And they praise it because everybody's just assuming that somebody else is going to protect us. Uh, New Orleans, best example, where it's like a bad disaster happened. They were not prepared for it. They're not prepared for huge events like this at all. Uh, five days to get water to the Superdome, that's insane. Uh, where were the police? A lot of them left their posts because they're like, well, I got to go save my, my mom. She's in a nursing home across town. I had to leave my post and I had to go save my own family. That would ha That's what's happening in a huge event. If a massive event happens across the country, they are not going to be uh, there to help you. They're going to be trying to help their own family. Uh, human nature takes over, and they're going to think of their own kids, their own wife, their own parents, and that's what's going to happen. So that's why everybody, if they were all uh, on the same page and if we were all had a basic level, we would all be better. There would be less zombies looting other people because they're unprepared. There would be less crime. There would be less everything if everybody had the same mindset. Other countries in the world, they're already preparing their citizens for a world conflict. Why aren't we? Well, we've got an ego. We think we're untouchable. How many people have just come in in the last few years? Just nonstop. Hundreds of thousands per month uh, or per year. Uh, millions now per year. And everybody's coming in. No keeping track. <laughs> That's nuts. So I don't think we're untouchable. They, they don't need to have uh, drop boats on the shore of San Francisco. It, it, we're flying them in. <laughs> so just be uh, just have a basic level of, of uh, awareness around you. And then the U.S. restricts travel for diplomats in Israel amid fears of the Iran attack. The United States has restricted travel for its embassy personnel in is amid fears of an attack by Iran to the store. The U.S. Embassy said staff had uh, told not to travel outside the greater Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, or Beersheba areas out of an abundance of caution. Uh, the ba the uh, Iran has vowed to retaliate, blaming is for a strike on its consulate in Syria 11 days ago. Taking the lives of 13 people. And I thought it, I thought it was seven, but I guess 13, uh, including the seven generals. So, yeah, uh, something something's going on there. And then uh, Dex, do you want to talk about JB? Says his message to, to the Ayatollah is don't. So he, he kind of reaffirmed some of the intel that was coming out saying that it was going to happen really soon. He just wouldn't go into uh, the great level of detail. Um, as far as the timing, he goes, um, but he went on to say the quote is sooner 
rather than later. But he also said he has one word for Iran, and that is don't. Don't do it. Don't do the attack. Because he says, quote, we are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support them. We will defend them. Uh, and Iran will not succeed, he says. So um, big words coming from the U.S. basically saying we're, we're going to be involved in this. If you get engaged, then we're going to be engaged and we're going to defend uh, our partner. So, um, <clears throat> you know, different shift from the conversation when it comes to the strip. You know, in that scenario, we're saying, hey, we're, you know, you keep going. We're not going to support you. But in this scenario, we absolutely are going to support you. How? Um, so how would we support? How would we support, though, if if because uh, Israel has their own military, they have a great setup. They they're not like UKR where they need us to send them a bunch of stuff. How would we support? It sounds like if if we would get involved, it would be involved, involved. I mean, oh, yeah, that's that's the involvement. Absolutely. I can't imagine it's just going to be, you know, we send them three billion a year plus more. Um, and we just recently did more to help them with everything. So it's, I don't think it's just a monetary issue. I, as we, you know, we didn't move a carrier group into the Red Sea and we didn't put a missile launcher uh, ship off the coast with, uh, for no reason, not, you know, not just to show strength. Those are going in because we're probably going to be engaged if this goes down as this, if this escalates greater than it already has. Are you, can you grab photos of the underground uh, missile what did they used to call it? They called it the uh, missile. Uh, it's a missile base or something. Iran has they. We saw pictures of it where they had hundreds of thousands of missiles and they've been stockpiling. Do you remember that? I'm trying to. Is there a way? Yes, we can... I have it. Hang on. Okay, thank you. So, so if you haven't watched for very long, we covered this like a year and a half ago. When we talked about this before, we said at, at some point in the future, this is going to pop off between these two countries. Uh, not only will it be biblical, uh, you'll see all of the different countries take a side. I mean, this is this is straight out of uh, Scripture. It's insane. Even if you don't believe in Scripture, uh, this has been talked about for years by experts. And then... <sighs> Uh, and then Kirby, John Kirby said the United States was looking at its own force posture in the region in light of trans threat. So they're already talking about we're, we're looking at putting our own people there or at the possibilities of it. And then the West urges China to intervene with Iran amid fears of a direct attack on is. This is kind of crazy, to be honest. Uh, they are urging China to step in. Western diplomats have mounted pressure on China to prevent Iran from escalating tensions in the Middle East without a, with a direct retaliatory strike against Is. What does that say to you? Who do you think is pulling the strings? And this is what we've said for years. Who, who is the real puppet master of all of this, right? Who's the puppet master of all of the changes that are going on? Who's the puppet master of... Uh, where, where's the origins of a lot of different things? Heck, going back a few years like where does everything ha end up tying back to a certain place right now western diplomats are saying there's something going on over here and they're going over here and going hey can you guys step in please can you tell your can, can you uh can you have grab the leash on your uh on your uh, uh dog there and pull it back i mean that's literally what it seems like they're saying for china to step in U.S. Secretary Anthony Blinken earlier this week spoke with Chinese Foreign Minister Yang Yi uh, and other counterparts in Turkey and Saudi Arabia amid rising fears of retaliation. Blinken asked the foreign ministers to, quote, make clear that escalation is not in anyone's interest and that countries should urge Iran not to escalate. It says we have also engaged with European allies and partners over the past few days and urged them as well to send a clear message. Iran escalation is not in their interest and it's not in the region's interest and it's not in the world's interest. And they, they talk to China. China's all the way over here and they're saying, hey, can you guys give us a hand? Can you tell them to stop? Something something doesn't seem right there. Uh, it looks like so. Dex has grabbed some images here. Let me let me pull this up. This is what. Yeah, I got I got two of them, or I got a bunch of pictures. But one of them is from the air the air base too. So we have the missile bases, but we also remember they had that airport or air base underground in the mountain. 
Yeah, this is yeah, which they can actually launch planes from uh underneath the mountain. So really crazy to even think about that. Um that means that we can't easily just bomb their airfields and stop them from flying, which is like why don't we I'm sure we have some of that, but we should have a lot more of that. We just think oh we'll be safe cuz we're geographically safe. Okay, so here's some images. How I'm... do they land in that? Yeah, I mean, do they have to hit hit the 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 hole just right? <laughs> and if they miss, it's a mess or I'm assuming... do you think they they land on the ground and they they bring them up with something else like a crane later and stash them? No, I think I think there's an air like a a landing strip right before and then they roll in. They probably have a system and they probably have trucks that tow tow them um in after they land. They probably have an outdoor yeah. area, and then they kind of land. I mean, just like how can they land on uh, carriers and stuff, right? The small little area they then land and then roll right into it, because they can. They I think can... it'd be cool. I think it'd be cool though seeing them take off out of there, like they're just popping out of holes in the side of the mountain, because they could do that. But landing would be difficult. Well, this is an insane network. Of, this is an under un, in the mountains. They have this. Like this is. They put a lot of money in, in, into this. Uh, this is they've been preparing for a long time to go to conflict. Uh, th- this is very alarming, um, and this isn't even. I'm even thinking of. Uh, so these are all the big missiles decks. The smaller missiles. They have pictures of tens and tens and tens of thousands of missiles stored down in the smaller ones. These are the big boys. These are the, the um, I don't know, are those ICBMs? They look big enough to be. Uh, those are portable trucks that can launch. What do you call those ones? Those are kind of in the middle of it. If, if anybody in the chat knows what these kinds of missiles are called. Uh, but, yeah, they can. I, they... I just added a, one more, sorry, at the end if you want to grab that. I think that may be the one you're looking for. Yeah, look at this. So let's see here. Yeah, <laughs> and it it they they had um they, uh, that's insane. So this is all underground protected. So it's not easy if if they did like a a strike or a a first strike to try to take all this stuff out. They can't. They they're thinking of that. This is why they're doing this. This is, the the reason they're doing it underground like this is because they're preparing for a main event. They are putting everything underground so nobody can take it out. And then when they get it all stocked up, which this this was years ago that we covered this, that they were uh, hoarding it and then they were stocking up on it. But they're doing all the business with Russia, with uh, with China. They're about to shift the whole world. The Everything that's going on with BRICS, this is a, 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 a war of wars. I mean, like, this is it. This is what we knew was going to happen. And... People, people should wake up. And then JB vows to defend Philippines in the South China Sea. All of this is going down at the same time. President JB has vowed that the U.S. will defend the Philippines from any attack in the South China Sea, calling its support for Manila ironclad. How crazy would that be if we go to a direct war with China over the Philippines? I'm sure many people wouldn't have expected that. Obviously, we have our treaty with them. But it, it it would be like out of all of the things that have happened, out of all of the different ordeals that we have going with China, out of all of the things like them stealing and, and hacking into our infrastructure and all of this, we go to war with them over uh, their, you know, Navy spraying, you know, boats in, in the Philippines. I don't think this would be the whole reason for it, but they said uh, Mr. JB's comments come amid regular skirmishes and rising tensions between Chinese and Philippine Coast Guard vessels in the disputed waterway. The U.S. and Philippines have had a mutual defense treaty in place since 1951. China has repeatedly blamed the U.S. for raising tensions in the region. One thing I don't get is if we had actual generals in charge of everything previously, just during our last president, when there was tensions with China, there was, you know, this chatter that we would f- do a first strike on China. It's crazy it even got to that point. But we actually had a general 
that said and talked to their counterpart in China and said, don't worry, if they ever fire a nuke, I will make sure to call and give you a heads up first. How many other places in our government, in, in our military, are there people that are the same way with China? And think about what's going on right now. We're, we're, we're barking at them and saying, oh, yeah, we'll defend. But we have people in our own military and our own government that would basically give them a heads up if we were to ever attack them. And they were public with it and people supported it. That's how cuckoo everybody is right now. Our general, I mean, that, that should have been like Guantanamo Bay. Like he should have been, you know, somebody going eh, at him. Who does that? At the same time, they're saying that they're going to stick up for uh, stick up for the Philippines. They might say that out loud, but how many people are embedded that are secretly going? Don't worry about it. You know, we'll we'll tell you if anything bad happens. Uh, and so they're also sending. They already sent five carrier groups. Five carriers to the South China Sea. So everything is primed right now. If there was ever to be a really big war, you have NATO in the midst of the largest drill ever. You have tanks all over Europe. You have uh, you have trenches dug all along Russia's borders. Uh, you have it, uh, uh, dragon's teeth tank stoppers in Poland and all, Romania and all of these other places that are building up uh, fences and and uh, uh, defenses you have along the Kaliningrad enclave you have them basically building up for some sort of big thing you've got all of the navies of the world split up into China uh, the Middle East in Russia in the Baltic Sea and all of these areas at the same time you've got all of this going down you have Russia and Ukraine you have uh, the Middle East popping off now and now you've got China and the Philippines. It just doesn't stop. Do you think that this is going to just keep going until something pops with them too? It's exactly what was predicted. And guess what? Next comes Venezuela and Guyana. It, it's just a done deal. And then, of course, at the same time, you've got Haiti, all of these weird things going on, and then Central America. Just remember where America is on this, by the way, uh, with the Central America. At the same time, they're building a strange bridge, a column big enough for tanks down in Central America that could totally take uh, the route. If, if somebody wanted to come up through the southern border, like a Red Dawn scenario, they would probably need to be able to get tanks up through this area. Again, this is the area they're talking about, the Darien Gap. Okay, There's a zoom in, and they have found, there's images we just covered. They're building columns for tanks to be able to go through some of these trails. Why would they do that? And nobody knows who's paying for it. Look at everything that's lining up right now. And people are still not aware of what's about to happen. I don't understand it. Uh, the words don't match the actions, but again, we'll see. It, it's getting absolutely nuts. Before we move on, make sure if you don't have backup food, go over and check out My Patriot Supply. It's one of the most bang, uh, affordable bang for your buck uh, deals for freeze dried food. Go to marfuglenews.com slash prep. It helps support our channel. We are a small and independent channel, so if you do want to support and get yourself stocked up, it's a win-win for everybody because you get a giant $200 discount for a three-month, or uh, I believe they had 60 on the one month. It depends on the time you watch this, uh, but they have a great deal. This is what we pick for freeze-dried food that lasts up to 25 years, and you get the most for your money. The price of freeze-dried food has tripled in just the last four years. If you can imagine where it will be in the next four, uh, again, even in five years from now, if, if it does triple again, you'll have another 20 years left on the shelf. So it's definitely something uh, good to have, not just for SHTF, uh, but for disasters, for fires, for earthquakes, for floods, pretty much anything. Again, they're stored in sealed packages, in sealed Mylar bags, and then sealed into buckets. So very, very efficient way to store food, uh, and it does not take up a lot of space for how much you get. You add water, and it brings it right back to life. Go to marfuglenews.com slash prep. You support us at the same time as getting a giant discount and getting yourself prepped. And then um, 
Dex, let's go over U.S. intelligence. Before we do that, let's go over to the chat real quick. Let's see where everybody's at. And thank you. Let's do a quick roll call. Where are you from? Just a general state or province. Um, we've got lots of great people. Mary Peterson is here. We've got James Damron over on X. Uh, let's hear Pastor Bill. Uh, James Damron, that's a scary statement. And I, I believe you're right. It says you're going to get hit hard. And by the time you do, they're going to be dug in uh, in your backyards. I th they're already in our backyards. <laughs> and then we've got, oh, wow, that was crazy. So many people from Ohio at the same time. Um, lots of Ohio's here. Uh, Central Cali, we've got uh, Phoenix, Arizona, alias. Uh, Marvin Dex, you the best duo. Thank you, guys. Thank you. J uh, John Baldwin, uh, Beth, what is happening? Uh, Frank Walls from uh, Colorado. We've got New Zealand in the house. We've got Kettle Falls. Uh, Cascade Foothills, what is happening? By the way, if you, uh, I, I don't know if you're asking why this. Uh, first of all, we used to have state groups. If you find other people from the same state, you immediately have something in common. Uh, a lot of folks actually have groups outside of the channel. They do barbecues. They do all sorts of stuff. Uh, they meet. They talk about prep. Again, it's a, actually, it was really, really fun back when we had the Discord. Uh, and then Cocoa, Florida, uh, North Carolina, Northwest Illinois, Home State, Washington, uh, we've had people get married in in this channel. We've had people that are now longtime friends that have known each other for five, six years now. Uh, we have people that are now roommates because they met somebody in their same state. So it's pretty awesome. Lots of Ohio's. It's awesome to see all of you guys. We've got the OH. Oh. And then we have Oregon. We have Las Lunas. Big Chase. Nice to see you. Los Angeles. Life after rigor mortis. Yaz Warrior. Nice to see you. Mr. Fister. We've got uh, Joe Tyner. We've got X Gamer. What is going on? Lisa Pritchard from Tennessee. Utah in the house. Uh, we have United Kingdom. Warrington Cheshire. Wow. Awesome. And Chicago in the house. Ghetto Empire. Mike Sant. Karen. Uh, Karen. Nice to see you. Beer Beast. Uh, Australians. What is happening? Uh, Iowa, thank you. Lindy Lou, not Idaho. <laughs> and then uh, Loveland, Colorado, Ontario, Canada, Tennessee, East Side, Embassy, Richmond, Indiana. Uh, lots of Florida, too. Thank you guys from everybody from Florida. What kind of American are you? Oh, you don't know? <laughs> All right. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie, I. I don't know if I can. I, I don't know if I can recommend it. I the Civil War movie. I I I enjoyed it, but um, it wasn't what I thought. It it did not explain anything. It did not give you any context on what was going on. It was very. I I don't know how they didn't give context. It's kind of mir miraculous how they kept it so neutral. So they were obviously trying to make make it so it wasn't. Uh, I don't know, held back from certain theaters. I don't know. How did they do it? But they did give an image of what the country would look like in a civil conflict, and that was very eerie. Uh, Dex, let's talk about the U.S. intelligence finding uh, shows that China is surging equipment sales to Russia to help with their conflict with Ukraine. So what we have here are two senior administration officials under the current administration um, who are discussing these sensitive findings today, but they're doing it under the condition of anonymity. So they're not leaking state secrets, but they're being told they could do this. They just have to do it unnamed would be my assumption on this because of the type of message we're getting here. This is a message for the public to hear, um, but they don't want it to be official. So, but they're saying China has surged the sales to Russia of machine tools, microelectronics, and other technology that Moscow in turn is using to produce missiles, tanks, aircraft, and other weaponry for use in the war against UKR. So this is a, a indirect finger pointing towards China. Um, this is something that will probably be used uh, in, in the sense that it's, I don't call it Ganda, because it may not be inaccurate. It may actually be accurate, but it's used for that purpose of of telling us that we need to understand that 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 no limits partnership is actually working in the sense that it's creating and and giving Russia everything it needs to tool up and maintain and keep its factories and and uh, war wartime 
uh, production flowing. It's not just the sale of straight up weapons, which we see from North Korea over to Russia, uh, but this is all of the other ancillary things that go into that manufacturing process, and it seems like it has ramped up significantly and at the uh, help of uh, the help for Russia at the uh, expense of China, and they're doing it uh, in favor. So that's uh, that's the story. I think it's it's one of those lines, like I don't know that all of a sudden we're going to come out and, and do something specific. It's more of one of those messaging that's coming out. They want to get that that narrative out there so that we hear it and we, you know, put that in the back of our mind as we think of evil, bad China or as we get ready for potential conflict in the Philippines or they get ready for asking for more money for UKR is like, well, look, the the big guy over there is funding it and making sure everything keeps running for the enemy. We need everybody here to help. So that's that's what I think this message is about. But it is a, it is a a big blatant finger pointing back to G uh, from the U S yeah. The, it, it seems like uh, G is the common denominator in all of the conversations. And then U S airlines asked the JB administration not to approve additional flights between the U S and China further on. I, it, it really seemed like it's like everybody you would think was talking about over here, but everybody keeps mentioning and bringing up China. It's like it's so blatantly obvious what's coming next. You've, you, you, we all knew that uh, the Middle East was going to come right after uh, Russian UKR, and everybody has been talking about China and, uh, of course, Philippines, but China and Japan, China and Taiwan. That's coming uh, next. But now the U.S. airlines are asking JB administration not to approve additional flights between the U.S. and China. Large U.S. airlines and some of their unions are asking the JB administration to stop approving any more flights between the U.S. and China because of what they call anti-competitive policies that Xi's country imposes on U.S. carriers. The airlines and unions said Thursday that China closed its market to U.S. carriers at the outbreak of the CV, the cough, and imposed rules that still affect American operations and airline crews. These actions demonstrated the clear need for the U.S. Uh, government to establish a policy that protects U.S. aviation workers, industries, and air travelers. They said in a letter to the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, the letter was signed by the CEO of the Airlines of America trade group that, uh, and the presidents of the Airline Pilots Association, the Allied Pilots Association, which represents crews at American Airlines and the Association of Flight Attendants. The number of flights between China and the U.S. has been rising, though it remains far below pre-cough-cough levels. The JB administration increased the number of round trips to airlines can make from 35 to 50 per week. Starting March 31st, after China's aviation authority promised to seek an increase in flights by U.S. carriers, so I I didn't actually um, realize that things were still like this. Dex, did you actually did you know that there was still uh, all of these issues with uh, flights between us and China? You you know I it didn't cross my mind. I mean I remember we covered it back when it was going on. It didn't cross my mind that it was still going on. But what what really bothers me about this is is this part of more of that pre conflict setup. Just let's use the the guys of oh well it's not fair that what they're doing to us versus what they're doing to us what we're doing to them. Why not? Or is this just a way to say hey we're going to stop or ratchet down um, or not expand the number of flights for other security reasons that they don't want to name security reasons. That was, that was my thought when I was thinking of, when I was thinking about this particular thing, because sure, there's a whole fairness part of it. And Oh, by the way, China's the big bad boogeyman right now. Right. So that's, you know, that obviously fits the narrative, but is there maybe something else underlying here? And we'll end up, uh, we'll follow what ends up happening with it. And then Russia successfully tests undisclosed ICBM to boost strategic security. Mainly, we're seeing a, a lot of secretive launches, a lot of launches, n not only by Russia, by everyone. Um, of course, the setup to this too, look at all of the different launches that happened, all of the statements. If you were under a rock last month, there was a very secretive Russian launch. 
Uh, they launched something into space, the Ministry of Defense there. And right away, uh, we had officials here, politicians saying, this is really, really concerning. We need to declassify everything to the public right now. Uh, said so they were, you know, talking very scary, like basically like there was a nuke in space. And within three days, they ended up launching a uh, the U.S. launched a top secret uh, Department of Defense load up into the sky. And they said that it was in some sort of response. They now think it was some sort of detection for nuclear uh, devices in space. Uh, so something is going on there. Well, fast forward, you've got the Russian Defense Ministry announced on Friday that Russia conducted a successful test of an uh, ICBM as part of the country's plan to expand and develop the arsenal of strategic missiles. On April 12th, 2024, a successful launch of an intercontinental ballistic missile of a mobile ground-based missile complex was carried out from the 4th State Central Interspecific Site, Kasputinar, in the Astrakhan region by the combat crew of the Strategic Missile Forces. So same day all this stuff is popping off in Israel, they're actually testing their ICBMs. They've just done a a secret launch of sorts. And, of course, there's rumors that they are planning on being in some sort of alliance that there was rumors of first strike capabilities and they keep talking about an an evacuation plan on all the backdoor chatter uh, called Noah's Ark. It's like all of the things that are happening with Russia and UKR, this has kind of been put on the back burner. But they're quietly testing new missiles, they're testing all this stuff, and then they're working very closely with North Korea, which I totally forgot about too. North Korea, who knows, maybe before China, North Korea and South Korea, they'll do a surprise move there. That could actually be before... Uh, it almost might be Venezuela, Guyana, then North Korea, South Korea, then China, Taiwan... But who knows? Uh, but but yeah, and then they say the test launch achieved its task, quote, in full. In, the ministry added that confirmed the high reliability of Russian missiles to ensure Russia's strategic security without disclosing the name of the ICBM. Very importantly, they are, they are launching secretive uh, missiles into the sky. And again, they did, we don't even know what this one was. So... Keep your eyes peeled. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, hopefully it wasn't something too bad. And then the U.S. Navy mocked for image of captain firing a gun with back to front scope. Uh, yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> it's a captain too, but yeah, uh, Apparently, he wanted a very small image. Uh, the U.S., maybe he was doing it on purpose. Maybe it's a skill shot, right, to see a very tiny, tiny, tiny uh, target. The U.S. Navy has been mocked for posting a photo online of a sailor shooting a rifle with a back-to-front scope in what social media users showed America was going to lose a major war. <clears throat> Essentially, that scope is uh, backwards. Image also sent the official press release was ca- uh, captioned from engaging in practice gun shoots, conducting maintenance, testing fuel purity, and participating in sea and anchor details. The U.S. Navy is always ready to serve and protect. I almost thought this would be funny if this came out on April Fool's. Like, that would be really funny. Um, I and, and what's even funnier is there's literally a guy's hand on his shoulder, and I'm wondering if the guy and, and his hand is actually telling him, like, hey, oh, buddy, you got that backwards. He's looking through the scope, so he must notice that the image is this tiny. Like, how are, how would you be that dumb? I don't know. It's, uh, it's kind of stupid. And then, uh, let's see here. Dex, do you want to go over the Glen Canyon is, Dam in Arizona? Is there a cover? Is there a cover on the end of it, too? I, he obviously did it. For, I didn't see that. No, it, it, it almost looks like, and I couldn't. I can't tell that scope, but it almost because if you look at the other image <laughs> down below, it, it looks like it's not as thick at, at that one end. But it's hard to tell the difference. Oh, so there's the maybe cap. He, maybe he's let, like left the cap on it too. So he's just like, let me pose for the picture. I'll pop off a few rounds, get some shells in the air, and uh, make a great photo op. And <laughs> okay, nobody so... bothered to say turn the scope around. 
I well, mean, the, even the comments on social media were, were hilarious, but yeah. I think somebody did. I think that's why he, what's funny is like, it freezes the moment in time, right? There's a bullet flying, there's bullet casings, and then there's a guy. Why else would he be holding him? It's like, he probably said like, eh, buddy, you got that on backwards. And this is the guy in charge, right? Uh, it does look, because you can see the cap. I think this little tab right here is the the little tab where you open up the the cap. Good catch, Dex. It looks like there's a cap on the front. So that actually makes me feel better that he wouldn't have seen. Because if he looked through the actual scope, but it's even stupider. It's like if the cap is down and it's just black, then you're not even looking through what you're shooting at. You're just firing. I guess they are in the ocean, so they can just pop off and shoot the water. But yeah. And and, and do you think some poor, you know, lower ranking uh, person actually put this together and handed it to them? And they're like getting so much flack right now from the captain who's like taking the heat personally. James, James Dameron says it looks more like a thermal. I, I don't think even it, it would it's a backwards thermal. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a, there's a correct, correct picture below where you can see the same scope flipped around. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're supposed to be able to, well, I guess. Yeah. Cause even if you, you have to correct the stuff on the left. Yeah. It's totally backwards. That one even has a bipod. That's that's a cool. What is this? That looks like a. It's got it's got a uh, suppressor or what is that? That's not a suppressor. That's a. Uh, it's another. It's like the. Um. Not a uh, not a suppressor. What is the other kind called that? Muzzle. M reducer or something that it's not exactly it's a, not a silencer but it's. I, gosh, I can't. The words. It, it looks like a, a form of it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's like flash suppression. Other there's other types of suppressors. Yeah, it it stops. It's not a straight up silencer, but it suppresses it. It's a suppressor, flash hider, compensator. That's what I was looking for. That's the word I was thinking of. Um. Well, there's there's all sorts of bunches. Some of them aren't exactly silenced, but they stop that flash from coming out. If if somebody's long distance watching for the flash. There's other ones too. Is there a site? Is there one that does it all? I wonder. All right, and then uh, Glen Canyon Dam in Arizona, more than 30 meters, Americans could face drinking water crisis as officials find major flaws in this U.S. dam. Before we talk about that, I I do want to go over to the chat. Thank you, everybody that uh, made it over. Uh, thank you, everybody over on D Live. By the way, thank you. Uh, thank you again, Nevit, and uh, Be Real. Ju Julie Pilkerton, thank you so much for the support. Thank you for the super sticker. Uh, Samuel Turner says, Iran is not my worry. China making its move on Taiwan to coincide with Iran scares my mule. Samuel Turner, I think a lot of people are in the same boat. Um, yeah, as far as all of it happening at the same time, that's that's the scary thought. And then over on D Live, thank you, uh, Poco Loco. Thank you, Kelly two three three four. Thank you, Michelle K. Kimbria Badger one, uh, one out B. Thank you, DFW Jackie. Says the W and the H and the O. It's a list of medicinal herbs to plant now. Uh, and then Comet Moon. And uh, Kelly two three three four. It's so nice to see you. Thank you for being here and. And you're another another Fugal fam. Thank you for being here for years. Make sure to thank your mods. If you have not already, make sure to go over and check out marfugalnews.com slash friends. You can find all of our wonderful mods over there, all of their channels, their Amazons, their link trees. Of course, you got uh, mods like Chance, who has books over on Amazon. Uh, several books, indeed. Uh, you've got CJ Blaze, great channel, covers a lot of great stuff. Lisa or Hall, you have Rip Curl Readiness, you have RJL Harris, Ilea, uh, one of our faves, Trinity, Red or Blue Pill, Ohio Kermit the Frog here, Wages World, and of course, don't uh, forget Gem Gem and Jammer. Wages World has been covering all of the solar events, lots of crazy stuff. In fact, he's been covering some really crazy stuff for the last couple days, so make sure to go check him out. 
Um, and then, yeah, well, there's a lot of issues with infrastructure right now. Obviously, uh, a lot of folks have been pointing out a lot of weaknesses in a lot of infrastructure from bridges to dams to uh, overpasses. More than 30 million Americans could be hit with a water shortage after plumbing issues were found with a major U.S. dam site that sits on the Colorado River. Inspectors from the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation found serious pipe damage in the Glen Canyon Dam, which means there will be no spring water release, threatening water supplies downstream. The pipes in question uh, are called the River Outlet Works, and they used to release water down the Colorado River to Lake Mead from the penned up Lake Powell. The fall release has neither been scheduled nor canceled yet, leaving residents of California, Nevada, and Utah who depend on water from Lake Mead without answers for now. Scary thing about this is if something like this happens in weird timing, so say something's about to go down, if our, if our, um, if, say this isn't the actual case something's going on with our infrastructure say there's a hack that adds in extra chemicals or there's uh, something sabotaged water supplies this big and things that that affect the water supply so big if this happened on multiple levels in different states think about that right before a major event or some sort of nationwide events pop off and you have uh, all sorts of infrastructure like this damaged or sabotaged. So no one's asking that question. I just, just thinking out loud as far as uh, a lot of our water supplies and, and different stories we've covered lately about how our water supplies have been hacked into. Uh, they are, they are complete, China has been completely in all of our systems and specifically been uh, tracking and monitoring our water supplies. So keep that in mind. And then uh, let's see here. We have Texas. 18-wheeler truck intentionally plows into Texas Department of Safety Building. Before we cover that, I do want to remind you, if you don't have a backup generator, I would highly recommend getting yourself an energy. This is a modular and expandable solar generator uh, that can be expanded up to 96 batteries. It's absolutely silent. Uh, it's portable or it is a home fixture depending on how many batteries you want to get you can make a whole wall or you could just take one battery with you wherever you need they are tough as nails they are built like appliances used to be built uh, they are incredibly uh, high quality they're uh, a 1500 pound latch system they have a reinforced steel frame they have heaters built into every battery this is the same generator that is going to be shipping out to the U.S. Army. It just won the STTR Phase 2 contract, and these things are going to be uh, shipping out very soon under that contract. The Army doesn't care if it's pretty. They care if it works and if it works every time. The only downside to this is there is a wait. You could wait up to six months. I would get your name on one now if you want the best of the best. If you want bragging rights over the highest quality solar generator out there, I highly recommend staying away from the ones that straight up are made by a front of a company that is tied back to countries we've been talking about today. Uh, as far as quality, this is some of the highest quality uh, building of any solar generator I've tested and seen to date. So make sure to go check it out. You won't be able to get it Monday. But when you do get it, you're going to know that it, it works and it works good. Go to marfuglenews.com slash energy and make sure to use the code marfugal. Not only will you save, but you'll help us out at the same time. That can get its energy. Either you can charge it from the wall. You can even get different mods like a rapid charger that will charge a battery in as little as 40 minutes. Or you can get even mods that change it just like Lego bricks. They You can either put battery or mod and it can change it so it can take more solar panels. Uh, which is the awesome part. You can get unlimited power. Get yourself some folding panels. Plug it straight in. You can have uh, daisy chain them if you want to add more. Literally, just like Christmas lights, you can add more panels. And if it, you're at the limit, you can then get a mod, and it will allow you to plug in eight more panels. So it's a really cool unit. Go over to marfuglenews.com slash energy. And again, you can also get a uh, EMP shield made directly for this. So keep that in mind. It is the only solar generator you can get an EMP shield for. And, and so this truck, this crazy, crazy 18-wheeler uh, truck intentionally plowed into the Texas Department of Safety. 
Uh, the irony is not lost. The Texas Department of Public Safety reports on X that a large tractor trailer crashed into one of its buildings in the city of Brenham, located in East Central Texas in Washington County. Uh, it had a load, too. This wasn't just a, a vehicle. It, it had a full-on load. A commercial motor vehicle ran into the Brenham DPS office, and there were reports of multiple serious injuries. A commercial motor vehicle ran into the Brennan DPS office and PIO is headed to the scene. Please stay clear of the area as investigators and medical personnel respond to the area. As the tweet read, Washington County Sheriff's tell authorities believe that this was an intentional criminal act. So why would somebody do this? And there was uh, four, there, by the way, six statements from public officials saying that they believe it was purposeful. Why? And in... And they uh, now say that it is stolen, as the tweet reads. So it was, as it came out, it was like the big why. Then they say that it was possibly stolen. Is this something of, you know, something that we're going to see in the future? Think about big rigs. Uh, think about a normal, say, a Ford Explorer running through a crowd of people. Think about something like this running through a crowd of people. That is pretty terrifying. Uh, Dex, go ahead. And the latest update, I think the total number that were injured is 14, and one is now has uh, unfortunately uh, deceased. So um, they're still under investigation, obviously. Um, the Texas uh, Rangers are in charge of this one because it's a Texas facility, and we'll eventually get more out of it. But um, the, the questions are, A, it was stolen, and B, why they do it? It was obviously intentional. And then, you know, with everything going on in Texas, there's a lot of questions about what could be happening there from, you know, uh, from that would be an event like this. And by the way, DPS, for those who don't know, it's a public safety organization that sort of oversees all law enforcement and type activities for the state. So it's a, a higher up state organization. Yeah, something something seems off about this. Now, a few years ago, I remember there was like there was sections and I remember every week on on the news we saw that somebody was going into a grocery store. Uh, that was a section of time. Then it was somebody was going into churches. Then it was uh, people driving into people. Uh, then there was the, the the sniper time. Do you remember that? Where you had this string of sniper events of pe the, the Washington, D.C. guy that was out the back of the truck. Like there was these chunks of times. Then then there was the explosives uh, all over the world, you had the train depot, you had this one, this one, this one. Uh, then more recently, you had the mass events. Uh, you had Vegas, you had New Zealand, you had all these things. The car thing really scared people because that can be done anywhere. Anybody can turn a vehicle into a weapon. Think about one of these fully loaded up, how much damage can do. And also something to think about, what if an 18-wheeler with somebody behind the wheel that doesn't care or... If they have one of these new machines, and these are not hard to acquire, uh, or if you have the the designs, you can actually make these. Now they can set up a simple computer, and they can machine shop this here. Is a machine that can self-drive a car, not super well, but it could at, at least enough to remote control a vehicle. Uh, we showed them back when they have one that can actually fly a plane. It's a thing that sits in the pilot seats and it can do all of the different things that a pilot would do. Think about, and it can connect to the computers of it. They, they've figured out a way to do this where they could turn this into remote control stuff. Uh, part of these were used for Hollywood films and crash stunts and things like that. And one rumor that was talked about by Fugelfam law enforcement is that they would put one of these in a larger truck. I never thought of like the semi trucks, but think about something like this driving into a power plant. That's a scary, uh, scary thought. Of course, you can take out a power plant with as much as like a, a sniper. They've tried. They, if they hit the right spot, they can take it out. But if you did a fully loaded semi truck, think about the damage that could be done with that. Now there could be a human inside that just wants to end it all for the cause. But the scarier part is that they could do it without having a human in it. So I wonder if semi-trucks are going to be the next stage of these kind of events. Obviously, the, we've had a lot of events where people have driven a vehicle into a gate or the White House. We had that one time. 
Uh, I mean, we've covered a bunch of them. There's so many that they all blend together. But something like this, they could go right through Gates. Heck, just the other day. Dex, didn't we just cover one that tried to get into a military base and they hit the... Uh, they hit the entrance gate. There was F- FBI headquarters in Atlanta. They just ran straight into that gate. It was the pop. It wasn't a pop up gate. It's a gate that stays popped up, and they lower it to let cars in. Yeah. What What is going on? Yeah. There's and, and I don't think we got much more information out of that. That's you know, that, other than it's criminal act, and they were gonna prosecute. How did they know so quick it was intentional? It maybe because like if it's a stolen vehicle, were they going from the police? Like, but they hit a specific place. Did they scout it out first? Did they know there was an office there with a bunch of people working and they could, you know, those are the questions I have. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, thanks again, Terry Quinn. Says Jesus is coming back. Freedom is coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, amen. Lift Christ up and he will lift you. Terry Quinn, thank you for being here. And again, thank you for being here for a long time, Terry Quinn. Uh, Verena Douglas says thank you. Thank you as well. High Tech Computers says thanks. Dex and Marf, been watching for years. Well, thank you. Uh, Terry Quinn, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, B Roll Beast, Nana MT, and Nevitz. Uh, being the light from Canada, thank you guys. Thank you, everybody, for supporting tonight. Uh, can't say thank you enough. Uh, all right. And then uh, we have all sorts of updates coming tomorrow. Uh, I'm sorry, on Saturday, we're, I'm going to put out – we're going to – we can put this uh, – interview out so i'm not we're not going to tell you who will surprise you tomorrow and then i will be updating you on any emergency events as they come this weekend i think is going to be pretty crazy so please be aware be aware of your surroundings i hope that you go check out all of our mods and then if you want a backup for anything here you can go to our website and find a full bibliography of everything that we showed you including tweets and videos uh that we we show, showed you here today uh dex thank you so much i appreciate you uh, much love, brother. Great job. All right, you guys. Have a wonderful night. Be safe. Be prepared. And make sure if you want to check out that Marfugal News short, go over to this right here. If you're watching the replay, you can watch our Marfugal News video right here. It's now time for the shoutro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It is a shoutro. <laughs> All right, we're going to make a fresh one for Nevitz. Nevitz, thank you so much for your support. Thank you, Bobby Sue. Thank you. Uh, le- we got all sorts of great people. Thank you for all the mods. Make sure to drop mod in the chat right now for your favorite mod. <laughs>